Alka-Seltzer for headaches. Alka-Seltzer for acid indigestion. Alka-Seltzer for cold discomfort. Alka-Seltzer presents the Quiz Kid. Attention, class. This afternoon, instead of our usual opening question, you children have an assignment in poetry. Since next Thursday is Thanksgiving, you kids are to write an original Thanksgiving poem about things for which you are grateful. Say, that is an assignment. However, it doesn't seem to phase these youngsters here in our classroom one bit. We'll be interested to hear those poems. But first, let's meet the young poets. And here they are, the quiz kids and the chief quizzer himself, Joe Kelly. Thank you, Bob Murphy, and hello, everyone. I'm happy to mark so many of you present in school this afternoon. Now, before we start our question session, folks, I'd like to bring you up to date on the Quiz Kids' fourth annual Best Teacher Contest. Last Sunday was the opening date of our contest, and already the entries are really pouring in. And say, do we have a surprise for all you students and teachers? Just wait till you hear. The makers of Alka-Seltzer have added two more wonderful prizes to the long list already offered. But like I said, this is a surprise, and we'll tell you all about it later. Right now, it's time to get busy on today's schoolwork. Here we go with roll call. Lonnie? I'm Lonnie Lundy. I'm 12 years old and in the 8th grade at Lincoln Junior High School in Park Ridge, Illinois. Joel? I'm Joel Kupperman. I'm 12 years old in 8th grade in the Volta School. Richard? I am Richard Wexler. I'm 8 years old. And in fourth grade at the University of Chicago Laboratory School. And returning to school, we have Ruthie. I'm Ruthie Deskin. I'm 14 years old, and I'm in 3B at South Shore High School. And the newcomer to class, Brant. I am Brant Ross. I am 11 years old, and I, <clears throat> I go to uh, Lincoln School in Highland Park, Illinois. Well, now, you kids heard your assignment from Miss Helen May of Buffalo, New York, which calls for an original Thanksgiving poem on things for which you children are grateful. Now, you will have to work on the poems at the same time you're answering questions, and I'll call for them later on in the program. In the meantime, try this question from Lynn D. Thomas of Rockwell City, Iowa. The name of what kind of postage stamp pronounced in reverse suggests what thing that England has not had since the coronation of its last king. What kind of postage stamp pronounced in reverse suggests... Uh, Joel? Uh, it'll be airmail. In reverse, that's mail air. Mail air. Absolutely right. Ah, good boy, Joel. Nice going. That's the right answer. And we're giving Lynn D. Thomas of Rockwell City, Iowa, a fine Zenith Transoceanic shortwave radio for sending in that question. Friends, one of these outstanding portable radios is always Alka-Seltzer's reward when the quiz kids answer your question correctly. If they miss, Alka-Seltzer's reward is the magnificent Zenith radio phonograph combination with the new Cobra tone arm and two FM bands. Either Zenith Radio is a set you'll be proud to own, so get your questions in. Send them to Quiz Kids Chicago. All right, here we go with more questions. Carl B. Bluegy of Tacoma, Washington, sent in this question. What professional football teams might be opposing each other if you read in the stars that Leo was opposing Aries? Lonnie. Well, Leo... Well, well, there's a player on the Philadelphia Eagles named Leo, but I, that's beside the point. Well, Leo I'm... and Aries are uh, constellations in the sky, and Leo is a lion. Yes. A sign for lion, so that's the Detroit Lions, and Aries is a ram. So? So that's the Los Angeles Rams. So that's very good. That's, that's right, Lonnie. Yes, sir. <laughs> How did the Los Angeles Rams come out last Sunday, uh, Lonnie? Last Sunday, let's see, the Rams played, uh... What did they play? Oh, I've, I've forgotten the Sunday before, I know. No? I think they played the uh, Packers. No. No, they played the New York Giants. So how'd the game come out? Joel? I think the Giants won. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, the uh, Los Angeles Rams uh, defeated the New York Giants 52 to 37. <laughs> well, now, let's get back to the question. If uh, Ursa Major were versus uh, Aquila, Richard? Well, Aquila is the eagle. The eagle, so? And, uh... Ursa Major. Ursa Major is the big bear. Big bear, so what... So it would be the uh, Chicago Bears and the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Right, that's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, how did the Chicago Bears come out last Sunday? Does anyone know? Uh, Lonnie? They beat the Green Bay Packers 7-6, to six, and the other team, the Eagles... Uh, also won their game. I think it was against the Reds or the Boston Yanks. Oh, you don't know, uh, Joe? What? Uh... Well, I know they must have won because uh, they only have one defeat, and they got that three or four weeks ago. Yeah, I think the Bears sure. and the Cardinals are tied for first place, aren't they? Well, that's the Western Division. In the Eastern Division, the Eagles are first. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes. Well, I knew it was. Uh, <laughs> I knew it was in one of those divisions. That's sure. Now here's a musical quiz from Carol Ann Dubois of New Concord, Ohio. Our organ. Miss Howard Peterson will play parts of three songs, and one word in each of the titles will suggest the title of a Shakespearean play. Now, you must get two out of three on this, kids. Here's the first one. Lonnie? Well, uh, the play would be Twelfth Night. The piece Why? is Twelfth Street Rag. Twelfth Street Rag and Twelfth Night. That's right. All right, let's see if we can get the next one. Lonnie? That's I'll See You in My Dream, so oh. the, it'd be a Midsummer Night's Dream. Very good, Lonnie, very good. And here's the last one. Joel? I've gotten plenty of nothing. And uh, so that's... Play? Let's see. What Shakespearean play? Ruthie? Much Ado About Nothing. Much Ado About Nothing, right. Uh-huh. Before we take up this next question, a word from Bob Murphy. Yes, Joe, and this word is directed to all of you folks who have never tried Alka-Seltzer for the relief of headaches. Now, the next time you have a headache or someone in your family has one, just drop one or two Alka-Seltzer tablets into a glass of water. Watch it bubble up and dissolve, then drink it. You'll be amazed and delighted at how quickly this glass of sparkling Alka-Seltzer brings relief from the pain and distress of your headache. It's not like taking pills at all. It's so pleasant to take, so gentle and soothing, yet so fast and relieving the pain that you'll be delighted because your headache can be relieved almost before you know it. If you're one of the few people then who have never taken Alka-Seltzer for headache pain, the next time you have a headache, all we ask you to do is try it. Alka-Seltzer will do the rest. Your money refunded if Alka-Seltzer does not please you, Ask your druggist for Alka-Seltzer and try it for amazingly fast relief from headaches or acid indigestion or the distress of colds. We know that if you will try it, you'll never be without it in your home. There is nothing quite like Alka-Seltzer. And now, kids, here's a short and sweet question from Mrs. John Dahl of Rocky Ford, Colorado. If you went to a candy counter and asked for a William Sidney Porter, what might you expect to get? Ruthie. Oh, Henry. Oh, Henry, why? Well, oh, Henry was William Sidney Porter's pen name. That's right, absolutely. How about a Joe DiMaggio? Joe? Uh, Big Yank. Big Yank is right, absolutely. Good boy, Joe. <laughs> you kids certainly know your candy bars, all right. Well, now this question from Thomas H. Elliott of Boston, Massachusetts, suggests the idea that a lot of people are timid about listening to music by the old classic masters just because the very names of the composers sound so impressive the people are afraid the music will be above them. But if the composers' names were translated into English, they really would become very commonplace. For instance, if you heard a musical number by Johann Bach, you might like it better if you realized it was a little something written by whom? Ruthie? John Brook. John Brook. Yes, right, uh-huh. And if you heard something written by Giuseppe Verdi, it would really be written by whom? Lonnie? Well, Joseph would, is the translation of Giuseppe. And how about Verdi? Uh, Ruthie? Joe Green. Joe Green, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
William R. Sewell of New York City has sent in this little nature study, kids. If you had to assort the following creatures according to whether they were insects or amphibians, how would you classify them? The first one is uh, a newt. Richard? Amphibian. Amphibian is right, uh huh. How about a Cecropia? Richard again. Insect. Insect, that's right, because it's, it's a moth. moth. And now then, kids. Uh, I'm going to hold up this next question for a minute while we talk to the boys and girls listening in about the Quiz Kids 4th Annual Best Teacher Contest. Now, as we told you last Sunday, this year's contest is bigger and better than ever. Why, say, just think of it. You high school and elementary students have a chance to win a $1,000 United States security bond for writing a letter about your favorite teacher. Yes, that's the great first prize offered by our sponsor, the Miles Laboratories, in this year's Best Teacher Contest. Altogether, there are 553 prizes for students this year. Besides that $1,000 United States security bond for the best letter, there are two $500 United States security bonds for the next two best letters. Twenty fine Schwinn bicycles with built-in fender light, kick stands, tank, and horn for the next 20 best letters. And 30 beautiful 17-jewel Whitnauer watches by Longines Whitnauer Watch Company for the next 30 best letters. And 500 gold-plated Quiz Kids pins and honor certificates for the next 500 best letters. That's 553 prizes for the students who write in about their favorite teacher this year. And wait a minute. Now, remember I said we had a surprise for you? Well, listen, here it is. Along with the grand first prize of a $1,000 United States security bond, the makers of Alka-Seltzer have arranged for the student who wins this prize to have a wonderful two weeks trip. Yes, it's the Three Nations Tour conducted by the Happiness Tour Travel Agency of Chicago. Now, that word wonderful doesn't even begin to describe this fascinating Three Nations Tour, boys and girls. You take your mother or your father with you and you travel to Canada... Old Mexico, and here in the United States, you'll see such sites as the Pacific Northwest, Hollywood, Catalina, Carlsbad Caverns. Oh, say, this is a trip you'll remember all your life. This happiness tour can be yours if your letter wins first prize. And do we have a surprise for the winning teacher, Joe? Oh, you bet we do, Bob. You already know that the teacher who wins the honor of being selected the best teacher of 1949 will be given a grand cash prize of $2,500 for a full year of study at any university or college, will appear on our nationwide Quiz Kids program, and be royally entertained for a week here in Chicago with all expenses paid. Now then, in addition to that, the makers of Alka-Seltzer have arranged a trip to Miami Beach, Florida for this year's winning teacher. Yes, sure, that's what I said. Some happy teacher will board a big new DC-6 Delta airliner and fly to Miami Beach, Florida for a week's stay at the McFadden Deauville Hotel on the ocean front. Now, I want to say to all you boys and girls listening in, that happy teacher can be your favorite teacher if your letter wins in our best teacher contest. That $1,000 bond can be yours. That exciting Three Nations Happiness Tour can be yours. So get busy on your letter and send it in. Here's all you do. Just write a letter of any length on the subject, The Teacher Who Has Helped Me Most. Write your letter by yourself without any help from your parents or your teacher and send it to Quiz Kids Best Teacher Contest, Chicago 77, Illinois. Make yours a sincere, honest letter, remembering that what you say is more important than how you say it. And don't put off writing this letter that can mean so much to you and your favorite teacher. Do it right now. This contest closes midnight, December 18th. You can write about any teacher you now have or one you have had in the past, providing that teacher is still teaching. Be sure your letter contains your name, age, grade, and school, and home address, and the name and school of the teacher you write about. All letters become the property of the scholarship committee. Decisions of the judges will be final, and in case of ties, duplicate prizes will be awarded. Don't forget now, you grade school and high school students, write a letter about the teacher who has helped you most and send it to Quiz Kids Best Teacher Contest, Chicago 77, Illinois. Well, let's see. We have more questions for you, Quiz Kids. And here's one I think you'll like to try. Charles R. Anderson of Richmond, Indiana, has a chemistry textbook published in 1944. Can you name six changes or additions you would have to make in the table of elements to bring it up to date? Ruthie? Well, for one thing... Missourium, number 43, yes. the elements, uh, was changed to technetium. That's right. And uh, the symbol is TC. 
And then for another thing, elenium, number 61. Yes? Was changed to promethium just recently. That's, uh-huh. that's not sure, but they're almost positive of that. And um, albumin, number 85, was changed to astatine. And number 87, virginium, was changed to francium. Yes. And then um, the new elements were also discovered, the artificial elements. All right. Uh, some of those were neptunium, number 93, plutonium, number 94, um, americium, number 95, and curium, number 96. Well, that takes them all in, doesn't it? That's wonderful, Ruby. <laughs> wonderful. Only asked for six, and you gave me two times four, which is eight. Uh huh. And you know that's certainly interesting, uh, especially about the new ones. It reminds me of the thrill we all had a few years ago when Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, right here on the Quiz Kids program, made his first public announcement of the discovery of elements americium and curium. All right, now the next question from our Alka Seltzer question box is a quickie from Ethel M. Smith of West Hartford, Connecticut. There are sixteen men on a side. And one of the 16 is a woman. What is the game? Richard. It would be chess. Chess, absolutely. Yes, sir. <laughs> Next question coming up is a math question from Frank Rosenthal of Detroit, Michigan. If you use all the digits from zero through nine as often as you like, how many five-digit numbers can you make? Now, you have pencil and paper for writing your poems, but I'm going to ask you to work this in your heads. Joe? Well, it'll be all the... It'll be all the numbers from 9,999... From 10,000 to 99,999. So that would be 90,000 numbers. 90,000 is absolutely right. That was plenty quick, Joe. Plenty quick. Now, I've just had the nod from Bob Murphy, and it means that he has his crystal ball all set up, and we're going to have a look into the future. Right you are, Professor Kelly. Uh, look closely now, Professor, and tell me what you see. Okay. Well? Yes, I'm trying, Bob, but, uh, well, it's a little hazy, don't you think? Oh, come now, Professor. Surely you can see that, that golden brown turkey, that cranberry sauce. Those candied sweet potatoes and those great big pieces of pumpkin pie. I've got it, I've got it. It's a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, you bet it is, Joe. And what a feast. Why, the table is full to overflowing with all the good things to eat. And say, you know, Mother, when the folks sit down to that wonderful Thanksgiving dinner you cook for the next Thursday, they're not going to give too much thought to the consequences of overeating. So, Mother, be on the safe side. Here's a suggestion. Check that Alka-Seltzer supply in advance. Yes, make sure you have Alka-Seltzer on hand in case some of the folks enjoy too much Thanksgiving dinner and, as a result, have acid indigestion. You know, Alka-Seltzer offers amazingly fast and wonderfully soothing relief from acid indigestion. In fact, thousands of folks agree there's nothing quite like Alka-Seltzer. It's a refreshing, sparkling solution that's as far from a bitter dose of medicine as anything you can imagine. So check that Alka-Seltzer supply. If those tablets are down to four, remember, it's time to buy some more. And say, buy an extra package, too. That's the wisest thing to do. Well, now, kids, it's time for a little fun. And since so many of our listeners enjoyed hearing little Richard Weixler ask a riddle last week, I'm going to ask him if he has another one to try us on. Can you think of another riddle, Richard? Remember, you stumped us last week, and I think we ought to have another chance. I have one, Mr. Kelly. Oh, have you got one? Oh, fine. What runs and runs and runs on one leg? What runs and runs and runs on one leg? Oh, say, there is a super double duper. Uh, Lonnie? A stocking. The what? A stocking. Stocking? Is that right, right, Richard? Huh? That's right. Oh, we got it! We got it! Hooray! (laughs) Oh, dear. Ah, well, now that makes us even Steven, doesn't it? <laughs> Wish I'd have thought of that myself. Well, <clears throat> here we go. I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, let's see what you quiz kids have written for your Thanksgiving poem assignment, which I gave you at the beginning of today's question session. Are we all set? To, um, let's see. We have two hands up, and Ruthie's still working on All right. Well, you go ahead. Uh, we'll start off with Lonnie. Well, this is rather short. For trees and flowers and singing birds, for books of learning so full of words, for schools and churches and everything, my thanks today I gratefully sing. 
Fine line. That was very, very fine. And now then, how about you, Joel? We should be thankful for that in these days of strife and war, we live in a free country where after election great, there is no hate and no... I can't read my own writing. <laughs> and no... And no, unlike some countries, revolutions and bitterness is fate. All right, fine, Joel. <laughs> and, uh, Brant, how about you, son? <clears throat> I haven't finished yet. Oh, haven't you finished? Ruthie? I'm grateful for so many things. It's really hard to say which ones to put into this poem to tell to you today. The very most important thing that ever came to me is being born in the USA, the very best place to be. Why, what if you or I were born beneath the Nazi yoke? I'm sure we wouldn't laugh it off as if it were a joke. And this Thanksgiving, we'd enjoy that turkey in the pan much more if they could have one, too. Let's help them all we can. Oh, say that. That was a dandy, Ruthie. And, Brent, uh, have you finished yet? still stuck on the fourth line. On the fourth <laughs> line. Well, I know how that goes. I, uh, that's the way I write my poetry, too. Richard, how about you, son? I'm stuck like Brand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're stuck like Brand, huh? Well, let's see. Now, maybe the two of you fellows could get together and help each other out. <laughs> uh, well, what is your poem about, Richard? Why don't you tell it just in words uh, what you're thankful for? I'm very thankful to be able to live in the USA and not to have to live in some country where there's war and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what else? I'm glad to have a good mother and father and to go to a good school and have good teachers there. And? And money. And I'm also very thankful to be a quiz kid. <laughs> that a boy, Richard. That was all right. Now, uh, just see how you can make up a little poem there without even using a pencil and piece of paper. That was just dandy. And, Brant, how about you? Can you sort of add the last or fourth line there uh, from uh, your mind instead of writing it down? How does it start out? Let's hear. Dear God, I, I thank you for everything you, you have given to us. Well, I think that's plenty. That certainly is. That's very fine. Huh? That's a very good one. I'm pretty sure we're all very, very thankful. Now, uh, here's a question here. Hugh Thompson of Dwight, Illinois, wants to hear a little discussion on this question, kids. Do you think it would be fairer to discontinue the Electoral College and let the candidate who wins the most popular votes be the winner in future elections? Joel? Well, uh, yes, because uh, in, in uh, some states, uh, say, where not many people vote, or in the largest states, they may carry elections. And the popular vote, actually, that's the principle of electing. It, uh, it really isn't quite fair. Uh, though we might be able to keep on the uh, electoral college if we use a proportional system mm -hmm. by uh, dividing the state's electoral vote according to how much percent the candidates get out of it. Yes, uh-huh. And it sounds very logical. And Ruthie? Well, I think we should definitely discontinue the electoral college unless we use something like Joel said because it's sort of, well, like a farce or hypocritical to do something like this and then say that we have a really free election uh, because there, there are possible cases where you can, um, a candidate can win more votes and yet lose the election. It doesn't usually happen, but still it's the principle of the thing. Yes, uh -huh. and Lonnie? Well, there are, there are points for both sides. If we did continue the Electoral College, there might be some many minority parties springing up like in France, and no party would really gain, gain enough control to really run the country effectively. But, on the other hand, a state like Nevada or some state with a small amount of electoral votes carries too much uh, power. As Joel says, if, uh, for instance, if Nevada gets three electoral votes, California should have around 300. But, so it's not divided proportionally that way. 
And as Joel said, I think it would be better if the states were divided. Mm -hmm. And Joel, did you want to add something to this? Uh, well, the uh, best example against the whole thing w would be the election of 1876, where there were two candidates, Hayes Republican and Tilden Democrat. Tilden got a majority vote, but according to the electoral system, uh, Hayes was elected, and he was a minority president. Uh-huh. So uh, that could happen again. Yes, it could. Well, I, I think that we've had a very nice discussion on this, and I'm sure Mr. Thompson of Dwight, Illinois, is very, very happy with the outcome. Now, Harry McDonald of Chicago wants to turn the tables on this question. He wants you youngsters to pretend you are at the opera, but instead of someone's asking if there's a doctor in the house... You are to tell if there is a doctor in the opera. Now, suppose you were seeing the opera, La Traviata. Would you find a doctor in this opera? Ruthie? I don't think so. You don't think I so? I don't know of a doctor in it. Joel, what were you going to say? When Viola is dying at the end of the opera, there's a doctor in attendance on her. That's right. His name is Dr. What? I don't know. That's beside the point. But there is a doctor in the opera. His name is Dr. Grenville. Uh-huh. And I suppose you were attending the opera, The Marriage of Figaro. Would you find a doctor in the opera? Joel? Well, uh, that was the doctor that, uh, I don't know exactly his name. It began with B, I think, Basilio, that was always helping uh, uh, this uh, uncle to uh, try to marry his war, yes, uh, uh, ward. His name was Dr. Bartola. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh oh Well, there's the bell. Uh-huh. And, of course, you all know what that means. It's time to question the judges and see who won this afternoon. I will give them a chance to add up the scores. And while we're waiting, here's an important message about one-a-day brand vitamins. Have you had your vitamins today? Are you giving your family the protection of one-a-day brand multiple vitamins for the winter months ahead? You buy winter coats and warm clothing as insurance against winter weather. But by all means, remember your wintertime vitamin insurance, too. Can you be sure that your diet is not low in vitamins? Don't take chances. Be sure. Take one one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsule every day this winter. Easy to take, low in cost. That large family size package of 120 capsules costs only $3 and a half. The 60 capsule package, only $2. So ask your druggist for one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsules. All right, attention quiz kids. Here are your report cards. Now, as I read your grades, remember that whether you win or lose you will each receive a $100 security bond from the makers of Alka-Seltzer to help you with your future education. And remember, too, that we take into consideration your age as well as the number of correct answers you gave in determining your grades. After doing that, the judges say that as a class, well, we didn't miss any questions today. Yes, sir, just like last Sunday, we didn't miss any. And uh, Joel and Ruthie tied for first... And Lonnie and Richard tied for third. So we'll see you four back in school next Sunday in competition with Patrick Conlon, age 11. Now, I hope all of you folks will be with us next Sunday when our special guest will be Dr. Philip S. Moore of Notre Dame University, who will speak to us from far off Australia. And between now and next week, all you boys and girls listening in, I want you to be sure and get busy on the letter you are going to send in to our best teacher contest. Yes, sir. I want every one of you to have a chance at winning one of the wonderful prizes, and your letter will give you that chance. So write it and send it to Quiz Kids Best Teacher Contest, Chicago 77, Illinois. And now until we call class to order next Sunday, this is Joe Kelly dismissing the Quiz Kids. Goodbye, kids. Goodbye, Bye, Mr. Kelly. Kelly. Listen to the Quiz Kids every week and listen to Alka-Seltzer's News of the World every Monday through Friday on most of these NBC stations. This is Bob Murphy speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.